interstellar space. Billions of stars like our own sun, many with planets, many of those with moons. It's hard to know which way to go. There are infinite possibilities. We're going to need a serious burst of acceleration. trillion miles from home, a 150,000 year ride in the space shuttle, and we've only just reached the first solar system beyond our own, Alpha Centauri. Not one, but three stars, spinning around each other locked in a celestial standoff, each star's gravity attracting the other, their blazing orbital speed keeping them apart. Get between them and we'd be vaporized. Trillions of miles from home. So far that miles are becoming meaningless. Out here we measure in light years. Light travels six trillion miles a year. So we are over four light years from home. Distances so vast, they're mind-boggling. Who knows what strange forces lie ahead, what we'll discover when, if, we reach the edge of the universe. Ten light years from Earth, the star Epsilon Aridni. Spectacular rings of dust and ice, and somewhere in their planets forming out of the debris, being born before our eyes. Asteroids and comets everywhere. We could almost be looking at our own solar system billions of years ago, with comets delivering the building blocks of life to these young planets. At the center of all the action, a star smaller than our sun, still in its infancy. Any life in this solar system would be primitive at best. There must be more mature solar systems out here. But finding them is like looking for a needle in a cosmic haystack. Twenty light years from Earth. Star Gliese 581. It's about the same age as our sun. This planet is just the right distance from its sun. Any closer and water would boil away, any further, and it would freeze. Ideal conditions for life to emerge.
And if a comet has struck, delivering water and organic materials, then life, complex beings like us, even civilizations like our own, could be down there right now. They could be tuning into our TV signals, watching shows from 20 years ago. But until we devise a way of communicating over these vast distances, all we can do is speculate. Us and them, living parallel lives, unaware of each other's existence. Unless life has come and gone, That's the problem with comets. They're creators and destroyers, as the dinosaurs found out the hard way. This is the needle in the cosmic haystack, the closest we've come to a habitable solar system like our own, but it's a chance encounter. There could be hundreds, millions more solar systems like this out there, or none at all. Some of the atmosphere on this planet, Bellerophon, is being boiled away by its nearby star. From Earth, we can't see planets this far out. They're obscured by the brilliance of their neighboring stars. But the planets have a minute gravitational pull on those stars. Measure these tiny movements, and we can prove they exist. That's how we tracked down Bellerophon in the 1990s. And hundreds of other distant planets. Sixty-five light years from Earth. Turn on your TV here and you'd pick up Hitler's Berlin Olympics. Twin stars of Algol, known to the ancients as the Demon Star. From Earth, it appears to blink as one star passes across the other. Up close, it's even stranger. One star is being sucked towards the other. Almost 100 light years from home, faint whispers from one of the first ever radio broadcasts. We appreciate it if anyone hearing this broadcast would communicate with us. We are very anxious to know how far the broadcast is reaching. From here on out, it's as if the Earth never existed. Feels like a lifetime since we stood on that beach, looking up at the sky, wondering where and how we fit in. We've learned one thing for sure. The universe is too bizarre, too startling, for us to guess what lies ahead. <laughs> 